If it were me, I would take this video and save it onto something that could not be destroyed. Spirit is revealing to Pamela and to all of us the origins of our world, what happened, and is also bringing some other truths that I have a difficult time with. And I'm proud to have been a part of this and to explore the depths of our history and who the gods are and uh, the secrets behind what we see in this world, I still don't have all the answers. And I know that they will come in time. That's why you should save this video. On the left-hand side of the page at 11 o'clock, there's a man. It says man on it. And he has a hat that looks like Mithra from Armenia. And it's connected to the earth because this is connected to the cosmic turtle and the cow. On the right-hand side is Pamela. She has the name Yah with a long white cloud above her head. She's holding a star in one hand. In the other hand is a orb with the name Ra and R on it. There is a boat in front of her that looks like a rat with the name Mary on it. There are broken pieces of sacred geometrical shapes. There is a diamond, a cosahedron, I believe it is, that has been broken. And then there is an orb that has been broken, like a prophecy stone. And then there is a female that has one eye of Odin with a triangle and a goldfish on top of the head. There is a rabbit above the diamond shape as well. There's a river of separation between the male and the female. And beside the god R from Armenia, which is who this is on the left, is someone wearing a red cloak that looks like a vampire. There is a horse at seven o'clock. There's a swastika and two crosses and a frequency symbol or a music symbol. At the very bottom of the page is the name Tealand. You have the number 13 on your shirt and the name Yah on your head. And there are two main stars, but the star that you seem to be holding in your left hand with the name Ra and R seems to be a heavy energy. So let us be like Sherlock Holmes and look at the symbol of that mouse or rat that looks like a boat. The Mary ship. I began by looking up the different names of boats called Mary, and there are many, dating all the way back to 1793. But the one that really caught my eye was the mystery of the Mary Celeste ghost ship. The Mary Celeste is an ancient ship that forms the perfect example of the theories of ghost ships. It was built in 1860 in the Nova Scotian hamlet of Spencer's Island. The ship began its unfateful voyage on November 7th, 1872. It sailed with seven crew members, a captain and his wife, Sarah, and their two-year-old daughter, Sophia. The 282-ton ship faced rough weather for two weeks to arrive at the Azores. It was here that the ship's lo last log entry was recorded at 5 a.m. on November 25th. Nobody knows what happened to the ship to this day. There are many theories ranging from piracy to deadly water spouts, alien saucers. The crew of another vessel spotted the Mary Celeste 10 days later on December 5th. It was discovered adrift, deserted in the Atlantic Ocean near Azores Islands, which is in Portugal. Its main sail was furried a little bit and torn, but all of the food and all of their belongings were still on the ship, and there were no bodies. It was as if they just disappeared. So this guy went above the, the uh, aboard the ship uh, to find out that, you know, if everyone on the ship was safe or not. 
And when they boarded the ship, um, there was no bodies. There was alcohol and food and luggage and everything. There should have been no reason to leave the ship. So there was not one living soul outside of the boat, inside of the boat, and the only damage that the boat suffered was wind. But my question is, why in the world is Spirit telling you about Mary Celeste? Well, keep listening because this is going to get pretty deep and pretty crazy. Mary Celeste ship is connected to the Sussex vampire. It's a Sherlock Holmes story. And Sherlock Holmes says Matilda Briggs was not the name of a young woman. It was a ship which was associated with the giant rats of Sumatra, a story for which the human race is not yet prepared. What does that mean? What does, why aren't we prepared to know about the giant rats or the vampires? So there is association between the vampires, Matilda Briggs, and the Mary Celeste ghost ship and the vampire. Surprisingly, the woman above aboard the ship, her name was Sophia Matilda Briggs. And this is where the story gets deeper. So these mythological stories that are perpetuated through the Sherlock Holmes series may have a basis of truth in their foundation. So the giant rat of Sumatra is a fictional giant rat. And it is called The Adventure of the Sussex Vampire. And there's a story about the rat and about a mother drinking the blood of her own son or stepson. And Sherlock Holmes had to go and find what the truth was about why this woman would be drinking the blood of a little boy. Now, in literal terms, rats commonly colonized ships. And if there were really giant rats on the ship, I'm sure they could have killed them. But according to some of this uh, investigation, some of these rats were highly intelligent. And what just gets me is what Sherlock Holmes says. It was a ship which is associated with the giant rat of Sumatra, something that the human race is not yet well prepared for yet. So what does the Mary Celeste the god R from Armenia, the god Ra, and you with the name Yah and the vampire have to do with your reading. It is something that is be is above us and beyond us, I believe. It is something that we have to search deeper into to help us recover that which has been forgotten. And you are being revealed truth about your past and your history so that you can shift your mental inventory. So if you have belief systems that need to be washed, cleared, this is going to help you. So the story goes that Sherlock Holmes realized that it wasn't the mother drinking the blood. It was the son who shot darts at the child. And I truly believe that this story is a cover-up. Sherlock Holmes has a job to not allow human beings to know the truth about the vampires. And the vampires aren't what we've been told they are. They are known as the giant rats. They bite you. They're highly intelligent. And they live a very long time, if not forever. And if you remember watching Interview with a Vampire, we saw Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt eating a rat in one of the scenes. They always throw stuff like that in our faces. So some people say that the giant rat is portrayed as an alien monster. And the giant and uh, Sumatran rat is mentioned in the 1972 novel Watership Down, associated with a rabbit. Now you have a rabbit in your piece as well. Then there's another story about um, a man who wrote about these large giant intelligent rats. So whenever you read stories and they want to keep the truth a secret, they will use symbols like rat, monster, alien to describe a group of beings 
they may be associated with the giants. And these giants come from Armenia. So the god Ar is the god Ar, our father. And the mother is Haya. This is why you have the letter Ya on your head. She is the mother goddess. And so when we're thinking of father and mother, this is the origin of of the world, really. Um, so the god Ar is connected to the Ark. And the god Ra is the god Ar spelled backwards. Now, Western Armenia, from the very beginning, Armenians felt very well that they are living among nature and are part, a particle of nature. Being in close contact with nature, they felt its kind and cruel forces all the time. I really love the origins of Armenian philosophy and understandings of the world and especially the goddess. So you are associated with this goddess and this goddess is part of your blood. They also knew that the sun gives light, warmth, and life to all people. The sun is the creator of all earth and is the main god. So the full name of the sun god was the great and Aryan Ar father god, A-R. The Armenians believed in one god, the Ar, A-R from Armenia. If you really look into the letters A-R or Ra, we will understand that we live in a dual reality and one reality mirrors the other. Where you, in one world you have the god Ar and the other world you have the god Ra. According to old legends, Armenians believe that they were created or born by universe Ar, father god, and earth, water, mother goddess. Her name was Haya. The Armenian for this was Hai He. Ya. So men were called R and women were called Ya. So this was the difference between um, the sun and the earth, fatherland and motherland. They demonstrated equality of man and woman in Armenia from the old time until now. And many of our religions have actually adopted the concept of God and the goddess mother from Armenia. Armenia is the original um, source of the blueprint of our beginnings and the ark. So the name Haya was changed to Gaia, G-E-Y-A, which means earth. And Yiva was Eve in the Bible. So Haya and Gaia and Eve, like Adam and Eve, come from Armenia. And this Armenian comes from near Transylvania, which is where the vampires are from, which is why Jesus says, drink my blood and live forever. For Armenians, the concept of mother was so high that even the sun after each day and sunset went to the rest to his mother beyond the Armenian mountains or into the sea ocean. And this is where we get the name America. America comes from Ar, Mor, Ika. So this is the symbol of Amorica, America. <laughs> they created our world. Now, the god Ar, Ra from Egyptian mythology is known as the boat as well. But we call it the Ark, Noah's Ark. But Egyptians call it the boat of Ra. So when we lived in a mirror world, they changed the words, they changed our understanding, and they just mirrored truth. But the truth is that it, that it was the opposite. Uh, the God is named Ar. Like how great thou art. <laughs> but there's still truth with Ra. Um, this ship or this boat is connected to the number 12. It is a realm of reality that is 12 hours, 12 months, 12 zodiac signs. They call it the 12 book of gates. And this ark is actually a, um, hotel California. You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. We all live in a yellow submarine. It is a ark like a, um, a program of awakening and understanding. So Noah's Ark is connected to Armenia. And my husband was just 
um, telling me about the giants, the Nephilim giants. And if you look at some of the pictures of um, the statues of Armenia, these are the giants. They are giant heads. And Mithra was the original Christ, born of a virgin. He also said, drink my blood and live forever like a vampire. And look at this picture. This is a man on the left with a cone hat like the one in your piece. And a woman on the right with no cone hat on her head like your face, like your head. And you're holding an orb. And this is uh, going uh, to the original Christ bloodline. So Mithra came from Armenia. And think about the name Mithra, the myth of Ra. And Mithra, spelled backwards, is R him. So um, it's interesting. Uh, you need to know that you have a long white cloud above your head and somehow it's connected to New Zealand. That's called the long white cloud. Why in your piece is does it say Tealand instead of Zealand? I don't know. Spirit sometimes will take out a word or add a letter uh, or misplace a letter as a communication. And I wish, and I'm to advance my mind to be more like Sherlock Holmes. Um, but I'm still contemplating that one. I'm sure it's something that's connected with the two T's on the left side of your page. And there's a, there's a third T that's missing. So the three crosses of Christ, the teal end has a cross that's missing. That picture that you just saw of the goddess of, of Armenia, she has the swastika on her crown and she's holding the rose. So this is very connected to this mother goddess. So now let's look at your piece. The river of separation is a, is a, it reflects um, a separation of worlds. So one world is R and the other is Ra. And so it's, it kind of makes us go back to Solomon. Sol is sun. Oman is moon. Yeshua is Yah means moon. Shua means sun. So Ra, like a roaring of a lion, is Ra and R that you have in your hand, like the orb that Mithra is holding in his hand. And these stars are connected to Sirius B, the dog star. It's about an awakening of human beings to come out of what I think is a program. And when these stars come, we begin to awaken and the truths begin to get revealed to us. And we begin to merge back to our original understanding of ourselves and God. I believe that the man on the left has a hat and you don't. Something was cut in the, in the other world from us. And it looks as if like a thief in the night, um, like the Mary Celeste, our consciousness gets raptured and we don't even realize it. And when we get raptured, we go to another world and we begin to see the mandala effect. We don't even realize we've been raptured like the people who just disappeared off of the Mary Celeste. Now, is this reading telling you that you were on the Mary Celeste in your past life? And that your bloodline comes from Armenia and that you are connected to these gods. And the reason that there's only two crosses on the left when there should be three crosses and how the other third T comes to a place called Tealand. Is this telling us that there's a new world being built where human beings like vampires are going to live forever? And we obey the law of divine order of God, which you have the word law in your piece. And is there some kind of secret to this L-A-W that I'm not being aware of? You should really look at all the symbols in your piece. This is extraordinary. Extraordinary. That the number 13 on one side of you is also on the other side. 13, 13. Did we and are we going to be raptured? Out of the number 12, 12 hours, 12 months, 12 zodiac signs, the 12 gates of the Egyptian book of gates of the boat of Ra, which is the false world. And will be, we be raptured outside of time to the number 13, which is the master number? Hell yeah, I think we are. I think this is our invitation. 
I think this is our consolation. I think this is our graduation. And you're wearing a graduation cloak. And I think that we need to make sure that we do not have any pieces of ourselves left in the past. We need to recapitulate because there is a, something, a piece of you or a piece that you're holding that is broken. And there's a like a piece of your soul, like, I don't know, under the Mary Celeste in some sort of prophecy stone or orb that's broken. So let's forgive and realize that we are everyone and everything. So if we hurt ourselves, then in the past, or we hurt others in the past, we just need to take the responsibility and forgive and let go so we can be as light as a feather and be raptured and get out of the false world, which is the land of Ra, and go to the true land, which is the land of R, which is a place of intelligent rats that are connected to vampires. And the vampires are part of the Armenian mountains near Transylvania. They are, they are connected to the giants and they live forever. So, um, think about it. (laughs) I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying I didn't know anything about the Mary Celeste and how the Mary Celeste was connected to the giant rats and how this boat looks like a rat. I I didn't know about a lot of this stuff. So welcome to your new world. It's called Tealand. And it is kind of uh, connected to Odin, the one eye of Odin, because the girl at six o'clock that is... In be- that is under the hat that looks like a Hogwarts hat with the goldfish is saying, welcome to the golden age of Aquarius. Welcome to your new hat, your hat you have been sorted into your class in the land of Hogwarts. And in this mansion, it, you're going to a place called Tealand. It's kind of like New Zealand, but it is a different place. Think about it. And if you ordered, um, I didn't look at how much you paid. If you, if you paid the money to get this original piece, there's still m- plenty of places for you to see more truths in this if you took the time to do it. This is incredible. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, so yeah, please continue to look and investigate the secrets that are in this and put a little pipe in your mouth and you're going to have to become Sherlock Holmes. Because the secrets in this piece are like, what? And it's crazy. If you look at your fingers, the God R has four fingers. Then your hand has five fingers. Your other hand has five fingers. So there's numerology here. And, oh no, yes, he's the opposite. It's, it doesn't say 13 on his side. He says 31 and yours says 13. So it's, it's a mirror world. 1331 raw R. My God, we need to awaken. This is crazy. Also, he has the number 111 on his throat. That's the number of the sun. This is the sun God R. mental orgasm. All right. If you would like a reading, um, this reading took me so long to investigate. Um, but I, I am so interested in truth that I am so thankful for this read. Um, if you would like a reading, go to forestfairy.com. <laughs>